What's up guys and welcome to Learn to Play episode number six. Today we're going to be looking about how to do a build order and this is going to be a three-part session. It's going to be a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. In the beginner section, we're going to learn how to do a macro build. Why do we want to learn macro builds first? Well, macro builds allow us to really explore all tech choices of your particular race or of all the races. It allows you to get a lot better and use your time a lot more effectively than if you're just cheesing and using build order wins. And now we wanna learn how to do a really, really good macro build. And things are gonna change and shake up as Legacy of the Void comes up, right? There's new units that are introduced, there's gonna be new timings that are introduced, and we wanna make sure we have a comprehensive, great build that can keep going until the very ends of Legacy of the Void, or hopefully there is no end, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna be covering. Part one is going to be the beginner section, as I was saying before. This is where we're just going to be macroing and finding time codes for when we're getting hit. So let's first go into the game and start with the beginner steps of what is macroing and how we're going to accomplish getting to our bases. First, where are macro slips? So for me, my macro slips at three bases. Okay, so we normally go, whatever the ba base count is, you go minus one. So we make it a lot more manageable. Okay, so for me, we're gonna go up to two bases. And we get to see when the timings are where we need to get our SEVs at full capacity, meaning 16 out of 24 on minerals, uh, and then uh, six going to gases. That's going to be optimal saturation. And then the other part is going to be uh, full saturation. So you're 24 out of 24 on both bases. You're getting the most out of the base as you can in terms of income. Why are we doing this? Well, if we're able to maximize our economy, then we have the maximum capabilities to get whatever we want, right? We're getting things the fastest. Uh, of course, there are particular build cuts, but what we're looking for are macro builds right now. That's why we're just going to do the standard build. Standard build is open to anybody's interpretation, right? For me, it's gonna be a barracks first. For someone else, it's going to be command center first. And don't worry, just pick one. Does not matter, it could be an engineering bay first. Just pick one and we're gonna find out why the engineering bay first doesn't work or why a refinery first might not work or two refinery first might not work. We're gonna do that via gameplay. As you can see, I'm just doing any build that I really want to, making sure that I'm keeping my money low. We've hit around seven minutes and I hit 16 workers on my first command center already. You can see I have the two gases as well. So this should be a major time code for you. I've gotten mostly all SEVs in this beginning phase, making sure that I've never stopped. There are definitely some builds that I can max this out a little bit faster, but the important part is, okay, well, around seven minutes, I should be at 16 workers here. I'm actually transferring over because it gives me more minerals, but at this point, I, I'm just keeping that number in my head and making sure that I'm constantly macroing, everything's looking fine, and I'm not running into any supply caps. All right, boys and girls, just about nine minutes, and as you can see, I have a lot of SCVs working all over the place, but we're pretty much at 16 out of 16, or 16 out of 24 on both of my, my command centers. That means I'm producing optimally. I'm able to uh, have all my SCVs producing at 40 minerals per minute or 40 gas per minute. Every single uh, SCV that's mining directly after that is going to be mining a little bit less. Just, uh, it's about half, it's about 20 minerals per minute. Uh, for gas, it doesn't really affect you at all. These are the key timings. So we got so, some pretty critical timings here. Seven minutes and nine minutes. Seven minutes is when we have uh, our first base saturated. Nine minutes is when we have both bases saturated. We got four gases. We got uh, 16 out of 24 SCVs on both sides. Now, why is this important? We should be hitting these every single time, right? In our regular games, we want to be able to get our SEVs out consistently as if it's a single player game. That's a perfect build. Now, where does it change? Why, how does this help us with the build? Okay, let's say you're doing this and at seven minutes, there's an attack and you die to it. You have to go back and find out how you died to it, right? So was it not enough units? If it wasn't enough units, was it you need to make bunkers? You can't tech too fast. You have to go through that and decide how you want to defend against that attack, right? 
So let's say it's a four gate, it comes at seven minutes. Well, that's great, seven minutes, we have our economy, but we just died at the four gate. Every single time we think, oh, well, we got the maximum amount of units. It's just, a, it's a broken build. No, it's not. It's definitely not a broken build. So somewhere or another, can we cut SCVs? Okay, and then we're going to resume on. And realize when you cut SCVs, it delays your, uh, your max from 9 minutes to maybe 9 minutes and 15 seconds, 9 minutes and 30 seconds. And realize how much economy you're losing, how much you're losing of the, I guess, optimal, right? Because at 9 minutes, we know we should be set. But now it's 9.30 just because we have to defend against that 4 gate. So now it's in our build. We have this SCV cut at five minutes because now we have to defend against this attack coming in at seven minutes or an attack that could come at seven minutes. And you keep doing this and you realize, well, Protoss can four gate, they can void ray all in, they can sentry, sentry gateway all in, they can do, um, gosh, there's so many, immortal all ins, colossus all ins. You have to keep them all in mind and defend against all of those. And that's the most important thing. This is going to help a lot of the guys, I would say, pre-platinum, right? This is how we're going to grow and get better. You just say, well, what time does, you know, this attack come in? It's 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, let's prepare for a 5.30. And then, you know, it's not the most efficient way because sometimes that attack can come in at 5 minutes, right? But that's for the intermediate steps, and we're going to look through that uh, in part number two. But the main thing is you find out. You want that eBay first? How does it help you defend against, you know, the X attack that came at seven minutes? Probably didn't help you that much. So then you rethink on how to play it out. You rethink about what your opponent is capable of attacking you with and what your opponent is capable of harassing you with. Uh, and from there, backwards engineer. That's the absolute best way to just start your build and become more and more comprehensive. In part number two, we're going to look at are the capabilities based on our opponents and really know the times. So right now it's all up in the air. Four gate comes at 6.30. Okay. What's the fastest that the four gate can come? Is it going to be 5.30? Is it going to be five minutes? Is it going to be four minutes? Well, we don't know. We need to be able to differentiate all of those. That This requires knowledge in multiple races. This requires knowledge in being able to make a build more efficient. So it's mostly going to be on replay analysis. It's mostly going to be on how well you are with all the different races. That's why you cannot, absolutely cannot pigeonhole yourself in just one race and learn it from there. You need to learn the other races a little bit to be able to deal with later on in the competitive play. That's episode number six, though, of this three-part series of how to make a build. I hope you guys tune in to the next one, and I'll see you tomorrow.